Hello again, we continue explaining the idea behind IDF. Um, I'm just using this slide again as a reminder, and remember this slide was borrowed from here, and I'm actually borrowing it from uh, Larissa Soldatova's slides. Now, for to convert RD relational data to RDF, we mentioned that in RDF we have this concept of triples, or we the idea of subject property value or subject predicate and object and every table in relational data can be converted in that for to out to that format using this idea of we have the subject here from the row and then the property from the column and then wherever the row and column meet that is the value or wherever they cross that's the value that we can use for value here and every table that if even if it has a thousand columns and a thousand rows we can convert it into a standard format of triples of course a thousand by a thousand if, if all the data is there of there's no empty cells that would mean we will have one million triples but the good thing is that they all have the same format so we can in integrate them easily with other RDF data now um, just a quick example here if we have for example for in some drug data we have a drug name or a, a, a drug code or something a category or formula and then some more information there a name, a name of the drug or something like that well we can represent that in RDF and remember we said every uh, the RDF usually is a, is a graph so we can represent that by selecting a node so that's a subject for the drug code or drug name and it has a category or has a property called the category now so remember the column is our uh, a property and then the value is there where the row and column meet with a row with a row and column meet that's the value so Col row, column, value, or uh, subject, property, object, or sub subject, property, value. So that drug has property category value this, has property formula value this, and has name value this, is a drug, a sort of, so, so on and so forth. I hope that makes sense. I remember when we said that these are actually graphs because we have a vertex there, vertex there, and edge, vertex, vertex, edge and so on and so forth so in our graph the subject and the object are a subject and object are, are vertices and the property is a edge in that is an edge in that graph and you can see here just a reminder of the graph or the triples are graphs so this is a triple subject property object subject property object node node edge or as people call them vertices rather than nodes We've seen that before, and we mentioned in my in our previous videos that we can actually use URI. So for for the properties, we can use uh, prefixes as we learned before, or we can use the full URIs, and they can be properties. Uh, uh, in, in 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 we can use the full URIs rather in uh, as in our properties or in our predicates. So we can use, for example, prefix for this URI. Let's say, for example, uh, SV or something for the full URI up until there and then we can say SV colon phone or we can use the full URI as we learned before I think I explained this in my second video of this of this uh, series you can go back to it and double check again here just a quick reminder of prefixes that instead of using the full URI we can use the prefix we can define it somewhere now at the top of our RDF file and then in the middle of the data we can use the prefix just just as a short name instead of using the full URI although we can use the full URI without any problems now because we know that now RDF data is usually a graph or any RDF data set is usually a graph then part of that graph are the URIs which are generally used to reference resources ambi unambiguously so these must be unambiguous we must make a difference between this and this because if we use the same word from two different namespaces then we need to know where they are coming from so we can know the context remember I explained this in my second video of the series as I said before and then literals these are the data values so literals these are the data values um, and usually used to describe data values with no clear identity there's not there's nothing wrong with that so we could just put the data value and then we can use the concept of blank nodes I explain blank nodes in my sparkle tutorial so you come back to my you can go back to my YouTube channel and uh, search for 
uh, I think I, I named it understanding blank nodes you can just double check there and I explain it there I hope I've explained it quite well so you can understand it but usually they are there just to facilitate you know quantification of an individual with certain properties without naming it so basically if we have a block of data re regarding the same thing or the same resource then we can actually use blank nodes as a way of uh, like it's just like a go-to we can move data into uh, a certain part of the document and then have a reference to that data and that's what a blank node really is I just go back to my video as I said and you will hopefully understand it and then going back to the triple now so every RDF triple has a subject predicate and object subject is the first part predicate is the second part the middle part and object is the third part um, um, usually subject can be a URI or maybe a blank node predicate can be a URI a predicate by the way usually is known as uh, property aka stands for also known as property and then we have object um, it can be a URI it can be a blank node it can be a literal uh, you can uh, we we'll learn this when, when we learn about the data format for example for, for uh, the turtle format I'll explain that in my coming videos now the node and edge labels should be unambiguous which are usually the, so nodes are subject and object and the uh, uh, the edge dates, edges or edge labels are the predicates ie these must be clear so the graph can be re reconstructable from a triple list or from a data set of triples now for literals you know the uh, they used they are used to model the data values and we can actually specify the the types if we want uh, and, uh, usually there are strings but we can specify types using that namespace xsd there we can find information about data types so we can say xsd you know hat hat xsd uh, colon double um, if we don't have a data type then usually it's a string and notice here literals may never be the origin of a node of an RDF graph so um, usually usually they are nodes but they won't be connected to other nodes so literals they will not be connected to other nodes yes so they are sort of now uh, uh, leaf nodes sort of the last the last node in a series maybe of nodes but usually um, subjects are nodes which can be connected to more and more nodes and the nodes that can be connected to subjects can be other subjects or other uh, literals then for RDF we mentioned that RDF is a data model it has several formats ie several ways to present the data in 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 the form of triples we have one format called in uh, called in triples which is basically a text format focusing on simple parsing turtle format I like this one so I'm going to explain it maybe a little more, a little bit more later a text format focusing on a human readability we have notation 3 um, we have RDF XML which is the official XML serialization or the official XML representation of RDF RDF JSON JSON for the JavaScript object notation and so on and so forth uh, the, uh, the, the you know the one that can be read uh, more easily than the, than the others is turtle format that's focusing on human readability as we said so I will probably explain it a little bit more in my upcoming videos I'll stop here Thank you very much indeed for watching and I will see you next time.